Dead tired. But I kept on walking through the mist. And suddenly I started hearing footsteps behind me. I turned around, and then I saw him. He was walking along slow, dragging his feet, walking as if he couldn't see. His face was all covered with blood. But I know who it was. It was Miller, the guy I'd killed. Midnight. The witching hour when the night is darkest. Our fears the strongest. And our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight, when the graves gape open and death strikes. How? You'll learn the answer in just a minute, then. The dead come back. Tales of Mystery and Terror by Radio's Masters of the Macabre. Our story by William Morewood will threaten your sanity. Its title, The Dead Come Back. About one o'clock in the morning, on a dark, deserted street, standing in the doorway of a gloomy brownstone house, a man with a wild expression on his face rings the bell desperately. There is no answer. And he rings again. Then... Hey, Doc Padgett. Why, yes. The brain doc knows what goes on inside a guy's head. Well, yes, I'm a psychiatrist. I gotta talk to you. It's very late. If you come back tomorrow during office hours... Now, Doc. Something's been happening to me. Something that's driving me nuts. I'm sorry, but... Get inside! Be careful with that. It won't go off until I pull a trigger. Sit down, Doc. Very well. well. Just to make sure we understand each other, I'll put this gun here on the desk. On my watch. We got just half an hour to get everything cleared up. And then? And then, I got a guy to kill. Suppose we start at the beginning. Your name? Lefty O'Connor. O'Connor? So you heard of me, huh? I'm not sure, but the Tilson murder case. That's right. But as I remember That's it... That's right. He decided I was nuts, put me away. But get this straight, Doc. Yes? I was never out of my head. And I ain't now. I see. Insanity was something that I cooked up to keep from burning. I played it up, all right. Good enough to make monkeys out of the doctors and the jury. But when I got to the nut house, it was different. I didn't have to pretend no more. You know, Doc, some of them wax act just as sane as you and me. Yeah. I was getting along fine. Till two nights ago, when I was called in to see the superintendent. He was a white-haired old guy. Name of Miller. Ah, uh, sit down, Lefty. Cigarette? Thanks, Mr. Miller. Here you are. What's that? This? Just a music box. Plays when you open the lid. That ain't just a... What are you trying to do to me? Oh, what do you mean, Lefty? I just offered you a... That's the box I kept talking about at the trial. The one old Mrs. Tilson kept her jewels in. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Lefty. In a pig's eye. I know what you're trying to do. But I don't remember nothing. Nothing, you hear? And why does this tune seem to disturb you, sir? Never mind why. Turn it off. Yes, of course. Take it easy, Lefty. I called you in here because I want to help you. You're trying to trick me into admitting I knew what I was doing when I hit old lady. Nothing of the kind. Next, you'll be asking me where I hid the jewels. Don't you think I know that routine? There's no routine here, Lefty. You're a liar, Mr. Miller. You got me in here to give me the third degree to try to break me down all over again. Well, you won't do it. Not again. I've had enough. Lefty, put down that paperweight. I didn't have no idea of escaping when I hit him, Doc. I was just scared. I was scared of what would happen if he kept after me. When I found a gun in his desk drawer, I began making plans fast. I brought him around. I told him exactly what he had to do. We went out, got into his car, started for the gate. Okay, Miller, it's up to you now. I understand. Now remember, 
I'll be lying back here with this gun against your spine. Evening, Mr. Miller. Hello, George. Going out kind of late, aren't you, sir? Uh, yes. Something unexpected came up. <laughs> you wouldn't be smuggling out anyone under that rug and back, sir, huh? I might. <laughs> <laughs> yep, looks suspicious. Just the right shape for a man. But I'll take a chance on you, sir. Okay, Charlie. Open up for the super. Okay. Open it up. Good night, Mr. Miller. Turn the left fork here. Ah, oh, the Ganville Road. I was afraid of this lefty. The Tilson Estate's up this way, isn't it? You're too smart for your own good, Mr. Miller. You can turn off here. But there's no road. In under the trees. All right. What happens now? Do we walk the rest of the way? One of us does. Get out. You're no use to me anymore. I'll let you know. Put that gun away. You can't... You fool. You won't get rid of me this way. You are... I left him there beside his car and started walking. I don't know how long I was at it. Maybe an hour when I hit the outskirts of town. The light was kind of funny. It was different from anything I'd ever seen. It was kind of yellow. Kind of yellow mixed with a mist that was curling up. Maybe I was tired, I don't know. But suddenly I began to hear footsteps behind me. I looked around, and then I saw him. He was walking on the other side of the road, blind, as if he couldn't see where he was going. And his feet were kind of dragging along. His face was covered with blood. But through the blood, I could see that it was him. Miller. I don't know what happened then, Doc. I must have passed out. Because the next thing I knew, somebody... People, faces bending over me. He's coming too, Tom. Yeah. How are you feeling, chum? Hey. He's as as white as if he'd seen a ghost. Who, Who are you? I'm Ruth Mason. This is my brother, Tom. We live right by. We heard you yell and came running out. Did... Did, did you see anyone else? I know. No road? No. Nope. You were lying <laughs> right in the middle of the road till we pulled you off. What happened? Did the car hit you? Yeah, I don't remember. Well, take his arm. Help him up, Tom. Okay, sure. Here we go, Mo. <clears throat> the name is uh, Sims. Johnny Sims. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm all right. <laughs> you look kind of bushed to me. Uh, I, I, I've been walking all night. Out of a job, see you. And broke. Well, our house is right over there. You come on in and we'll oh, fix thanks. It. I gotta keep moving. What's the rush if you're just looking for a job? Well, I, uh... Hey. Cops coming this way. Probably looking for that man that escaped from the state hospital. That's but, right. They said uh, that... What? Johnny, what's the matter? <laughs> you look as if you're going to fade again. I guess I must be worse than I thought. Look, does that invite still hold? Well, of course. Right this way. Something more, Johnny? No, thanks, Ruth. Couldn't manage another thing. Full up. Oh, then you lie right down on that sofa. That is, if Tom will get off with his paper. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. I was just reading some more about that guy, Lefty O'Connor, that broke out of the asylum. Seems he forced the superintendent to drive him out in a car. Please, Tom. Let's not talk about it. Gives me the creeps to think of anyone like that being loose. Maybe he ain't so bad. He's a murderer, Johnny. A homicidal maniac. How do you know? Maybe the super deserved killing. The super? Yeah. But the paper doesn't say anything about the super being killed. Well, Ruth said... I meant the old lady, Mrs. Tilson. Oh. Yeah, I, I guess I must have heard. Uh, maybe I just thought... I'll try the radio. Maybe there's some late news on it. Well, you're probably right, Johnny. The super wouldn't stand a chance. 
Sure. The way I figured. What's the matter, Johnny? Turn that off. What? I said turn it off. Why? Johnny. Hey, what gives? Well, I'm sorry. But I, I don't like radios. Well, it's all right, Johnny. We understand. Now, suppose we show you to your room and you take a good long sleep. I must have slept like a dead man, Doc. It was dark when I woke up. There was nobody in the house. I switched on the lamp and looked at my watch a few minutes before midnight. I didn't have much time if I wanted to get the jewels and blow town before morning. So I started for the door, but before I reached it, it opened. And standing there, smiling, kind of sad-like, was Miller. Hello, Lefty. Did you get the jewels? You! It can't be you. You're, you're dead. I told you you wouldn't get rid of me so easily. What do you want with me? Nothing, Lefty. Just what I wanted before, to help you. You're a lion. You still think you can break me? Give me the confess, but I'll show you. I must have hit the lights, Doc, or maybe they were never on, because suddenly the room was all dark. I struck a match. I bent down to look at Miller, make sure that he was really dead this time. And I ain't crazy, Doc. You gotta believe me. But the man lying face up on the floor was Tom Mason. A dead man who came back. And now, a second victim, as the hands of the clock move inexorably to the witching hour. And yet another... Murder! At midnight! Now, back to Murder at Midnight. To Lefty O'Connor, sitting in a psychiatrist's office with a gun in front of him, trying to convince the doctor and himself that he is sane. My hand was shaking so much that the match went out. It was Tom, all right. Tom Mason, dead. But it was better that way than what I'd thought, because it meant that Miller hadn't come back from the grave. I probably just imagined I heard him talking to me. I frisked Mason, I got the keys to his car, and went out. It was a little coupe parked in the driveway. I opened the door. I was just getting in when... Hello, Johnny. Huh? Ruth. <laughs> you look a little better than you did before. How do you feel? Oh, I, uh, fine, fine. Oh, that's good. You were sleeping so soundly when I left it. Are you going somewhere? Well, yeah, yeah. There was something I had to do, and, uh, Tom told me I could borrow his car. Oh, all right. I'll go inside. No, and... you can't go in there. Well, what do you mean? Why not? Well, I mean, uh, such a swell night. Uh, have a little drive, Ruth. <laughs> but what about your errand? Well, that'll just take a minute. It'll be swell having you along. Well, I don't know. I I don't suppose Tom will mind. But... I'm sure he won't. <laughs> well, then, all right. <sighs> I guess that's one of the wonderful things about life. You just never know when something completely unexpected will happen. <laughs> that's right, baby. You just never know. Why so quiet, Johnny? Huh? <laughs> you ask me to come driving with you, and I do, and you don't say a thing to me. What should I be saying? Well, you might start by telling me something about yourself. Like I said, I'm just a guy looking for work. What kind of a job did you have before? Chauffeur. Well, that sounds interesting. Did you work around here? Why? I just wondered. You seem to know the road so well. Listen, baby, let's not talk about me. I'd rather hear about you. Well, there's not much to tell. I'm 21, fancy free, and I work for a living. I'm a nurse in a psychiatrist's office. A what? Psychiatrist. A doctor who, well, helps people who are disturbed mentally. Like people who, uh, see things that ain't there? Oh, yes. He gets a lot of those kind of cases. What does he do? Mm, talks to the patients, explains away the hallucination. His name is Dr. Paget, and he's really wonderful. Johnny? Yeah? Where are we going? Why, baby? We've 
turned off the main road. This leads past the old Tilson mansion. What's that? The house where that terrible murder took place about a year ago. It's all boarded up now, of course. Yeah, but... yeah, that's the job Lefty O'Connor pulled, yes. huh? Yes. Yeah, he was old Mrs. Tilson's chauffeur. A what? Chauffeur. Quite a coincidence, ain't it? Johnny, you're turning in the driveway. Yeah. See, a couple of nights ago, I broke into this place to sleep. It was just an empty house to me. I didn't know anything about no murder. I left the parcel behind. I want to pick it up. Oh, oh, I, I see. You think I had any other reason for coming here? No, Johnny. Sit tight, baby. I'll be back in a minute. All right. All right, Johnny. I... Well, why are you taking the keys? Just to make sure the car stays here and you with it. But of course I'll stay. You better, baby. Or it'll be just too bad. Loose from one of the windows. Climbed into the old house. It was black as pitch inside. That musty, shut in smell. Felt my way along the wall to the stairs. Climbed to the second floor. The old lady's room was at the head of the stairs. It wasn't so dark in there. Windows hadn't been boarded and the moonlight was coming in. And I saw that marble fireplace with a gargoyle in the middle grinning at me. So I picked up the poker and smashed into it. And there, behind where I pushed it past a loose brick, was a paper bag containing the jewels. I looked inside to make sure that everything was safe. Moonlight sparkled on them shiners. And then, then Doc, suddenly, suddenly out of nowhere it started. That music started. Johnny. Stop it! Stop it! Johnny. What? Oh! Ruth! Oh, Ruth, get her to stop. Get her to stop. Oh, get her to stop. Mrs. Tilson, that tune. What tune? You mean you don't hear nothing? Well, no, Johnny. But you must. It's gone now. Johnny, you're shaking all over you. Johnny, what's that? What's what? Well, they're all over the floor. They look like diamonds, jewels. Didn't I tell you to stay in the car? What are you doing up here? I, I heard noises and you... You were spying on me. No, I wasn't, Lefty. I... What did you call me? Nothing. I... So you guessed it, huh? Okay. I am Lefty O'Connor, and I came back for the jewels. But that information ain't traveling far. Mm-hmm. Not with you, anyway. What do you mean? I... No! Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. was rattled, Doc. The music did it. That and everything else. I left the lion there and I picked up the jewels and beat it. I started the car fast. I just about hit the main highway when the wheels started acting funny. I stopped and got out to look. It was a flat. My luck had played out. If I took the time to change it, someone might come along. And just then I did hear a car coming. I, I froze, waiting for it to pass. Instead, it stopped, and... Hi, Johnny. Tom. Don't miss. I got out as soon as I could. Which is the flat? What? How did you know? How did I know? Why, you just called me. You told me you couldn't find the tools. And... I called you? Why, yeah. Don't you remember? No, no, I don't. I couldn't have... I, 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 I... Of course, it's none of my business, Johnny, but... Look, you've been acting awful funny. I'm beginning to think maybe you ought to go see a doctor. Someone like Doc Patchett that Ruth works for. There's nothing wrong with me. Nothing. Okay. Okay. Get started with this, Jack. The rest of the tools are under the front seat. I'll get them. No, no, wait. What's this paper bag doing? Give me that! (laughs) You're calling in for pebble collecting, huh? Pebbles? Yeah, look at them. Oh, they are pebbles. (laughs) Yeah. What's happening to me? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> but I told you, you don't look well. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Hey, wh- wait a minute. I told you that was a borrowed car. Get off that run, boy. I say get off. You're not 
his story. I kept hearing what he said. Tom, over and over again. I'm nuts. I'm crazy. I couldn't stand it anymore. So I looked you up in the phone book and I come over. What do you expect me to do, Lefty? Do? You're a brain doc. I'm not nuts. I know I'm not. Why am I seeing these things? What's happening to me? Well, it's rather difficult to make a diagnosis this quickly, but uh, I'd say that you were suffering from hallucinations because of a sense of guilt. Guilt? About what? Well, it probably started with that first murder, Mrs. Tilson, and it's been weighing, preying on your mind ever since. Now, if you could extrovert that, get it out of your system. But I I did. Uh, That's true, but not as a confession with all the details. That's the only way you can achieve a complete catharsis. Well, that's crazy. All right. You wanted my advice, but you don't have to take it. Then you think... Okay. Okay, I did kill her. I knew all the time what I was doing. I waited for a night when there was only the two of us in the house, and then I beat her brains out with a tire iron. There. There, I said it, I told you. Yes, Lefty. And I think that now I can promise you you'll never be troubled by hallucinations again. You sure, Doc? Quite sure. That's good. Because... Remember I said that in half an hour I was going to kill someone? Yes. Well, a half hour is up. And you're the man. Am I, Lefty? Yeah. I'm sorry, Doc, but you know too much now. You're the only one who does, so... I wouldn't, Lefty. Why... Why are you sitting there like that? I shot you! Yes, Lefty, with blanks in your gun. All right, boy. Take it easy, Lefty. We got you covered. No! And Mason! Did you get it? Uh Uh-huh. Every word. You're cops! No kidding. Then... The whole thing... Let him escape, and everything that happened afterwards was just a trick. That's right. You wanted to show I wasn't nuts, get me to confess. Smart boy. You made just one mistake, Lefty. Or rather, Ruth did. Following you into the Tilson mansion. She paid for that with her life. But now, now you're going to pay. No, no! Shut up. Yes, Lefty, for that and for the Tilson murder. And my only regret is that rats like you can only burn once. Two grim-faced men take hold of Lefty O'Connor. And Lefty knows that he has come to the end of the road. A road that began when he first heard the clock in the old Tilson mansion strike 12 for... Murder! At midnight! with us again when death's face peers out of the darkened windows of deserted houses and the clocks strike twelve for murder at midnight. The part of Lefty O'Connor was played by Joseph Julian. With music by Charles Paul, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leder. 